Do you consider yourself smart? <laughs> Where does smart come from? If you're here today at a TEDx event, I bet you think you're pretty smart. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you may have been brought up with the idea that smart comes from academic achievement, from information, from knowledge. Is that really where smart comes from? I always knew I was pretty smart. I was the kid in grade school who scored really high on all those standardized tests. I was always at the top of my class. In high school, I scored high on my SATs, and it, that got me into an honors program in college. And then, by the middle of my career, I had landed what I thought was my dream job as a writer in a corporate communications department. I was well-traveled. I could ask directions in just about any romance language. <laughs> I was a voracious reader. I was well respected for my business savvy. I could talk to anyone on just about anything. People used to say to me, is there anything you haven't done? Is there anything you don't know? I knew I was smart because of the information I had in my head. And everyone else knew it too. And then two years ago, almost to this day, I fell in a bathtub in Germany. As I was getting into the tub to take a shower, I had one foot in the tub and the other foot out of the tub. And the foot that was in the tub slipped out from under me and I went thunk, forward, forehead first into a tile wall. The leg that was behind me hit the side of the tub. Oh, that smarts. I didn't lose consciousness. I felt a little drunk afterwards. I slurred my words a little bit, but I felt mostly okay, so I flew home the next day. Then I returned to work a couple of days later, and things began to get progressively worse. I was stumbling a lot. I was slurring my words, and then I began to vomit. But still, I thought, hey, I've given birth at home in my living room with no drugs. I can handle this. <laughs> but I couldn't handle it. And I finally left work that day and went straight to my doctors. And they sent me straight to the hospital. What I found out I had had is called a coup contra coup head injury. And what that means is this. Picture your brain like a bowl full of jello. So the jello is your brain and the bowl is your skull. Now imagine what happens if you take that bowl and you shove it with all the force of your body weight into a tile wall. What happens to that jello? Well, <laughs> it hits the side of the bowl where the impact happened. And then what happens? Well, as jello does, it will bounce back and hit the other side of the bowl. So a coup contra coup head injury means that there is damage to the brain both at the point of impact and the point opposite the impact. When I first got to the hospital, this is what my brain injury looked like. Lovely, huh? I know, it's not a, that's not my head. <laughs> I haven't made a mistake. <laughs> that's the leg that hit the side of the tub as I fell forward. I thought that was my problem. 
I'd show you a picture of my brain and my head, but it actually looked pretty good from the outside. But truly, I could have died. Falls are a leading source of traumatic brain injury, or TBI-related death. And what I had is considered a mild traumatic brain injury, or an MTBI. MTBIs account for about 75% of all brain injuries in this country. Turns out, I had suffered damage to both my frontal lobe and my occipital lobe. The prescription was brain rest. <laughs> brain rest means no stimulation, no activity. It means no TV, no reading, no computer, no driving, no exercise. It basically means shut off your brain. That's kind of like asking a fish not to swim. It's really hard for a smart person. <laughs> After about three months of brain rest, things had only improved slightly. I had to quit my job. My whole life was falling apart because I fell in a bathtub. Things that had been previously very easy that I had done without even thinking were suddenly very difficult. I used to be the fastest reader in the world. Now, a page of text looks like this. Crossing a street is really difficult for me. It's very hard for me to process information when it's coming from multiple directions, and that can get you run over. <laughs> Going downstairs is very difficult for me. It's really hard for me to see where one step ends and where I need to put my foot to step down. Short-term memory, gone. I can't even remember what day it is. I'm not just talking about the day, I'm talking about like the day of the week. And then I go to look it up and it's out of my head in a minute or two. And then I got really depressed. And it wasn't because of what I couldn't do anymore. It was because I was no longer smart. In case you haven't noticed, I am fiercely independent. <laughs> so as time went on, and some things did, did gradually improve, I decided I wanted to go out and start doing things again. I wanted to take a walk. But to do that, you have to be able to cross a street. So I developed this adaptation for crossing a street, but I didn't even realize I was doing it. So this is how I cross a street. When I need to cross a busy street, like out here, <laughs> I scan the crowd, and I find the most responsible looking person, often. <laughs> I wasn't expecting a laugh, but <laughs> thank you. <laughs> often, that's a mother with a small child. <laughs> they are responsible. Um, so then I kind of just like attach myself to them and follow them across the street until I feel safe. When I go downstairs, I grip the banister with all my might, and then I use my foot as a feeler to feel where I need to step down. Every morning when I get up, I look up the day of the week, and then I write it down on any little scrap of paper I can find, many of them, and I put them everywhere. Saturday, 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 Saturday. <laughs> I remembered what today was. <laughs> and still I'll forget later. What's life like now? 
Well, I judge every day by how I feel when I wake up in the morning, by how many beers it may seem like I've had the night before. <laughs> so a two beer morning, bearable. A four beer morning seems I may still be lots of fun. I look normal. I might stumble a little. I might slur my words, but I still look pretty good. A six beer morning. <laughs> Six beer morning means I'm definitely going to fall, I'm going to walk into walls, and I might get into the car to go to the grocery store and forget how to get there. Sometimes on a six beer morning, I can see words in my head, simple words like cat, dog, coffee. I can see them, but I can't get them out of my mouth. So on a six beer morning, I know I'm going to have to rest until the beer wears off. So my life now, two years later, <sighs> slower, simpler, less stress. Back when I was that woman, that smart woman with a high-powered job, I could power through anything. I could use my intellect to override my body. Guess what? Can't do that anymore. My brain shuts off and it commands me to rest. I used to think that smart was all about information. But it wasn't until my husband and others pointed out the creative adaptations that I had made that I realized the true paradox of smart, maybe I was still smart, maybe in a different way. I've been thinking a lot about thinking and about what makes people smart. Creative, adaptive mechanisms make us smart. Creative innovation. I realize now that was always a part of me, but it took an unplugging of my brain from that intellectual piece to get back in touch with that. It used to be a very small part of me. Now, I lead with it. Resilience makes us smart. When I look back at my life, my career, parenting, education, all of the things that I've done, I realize also that resilience has always been part of my innate core smart. And again, when I had to unplug my brain, I learned to rely on that again. Remember that movie Big with Tom Hanks? Remember how he was a little kid in a man's body and he was working in that toy company and he was working his way up to an executive position? He didn't have adult knowledge or ideas, adult ideas of how things should be. He was using his imagination. He had no perceptual notions of how he should be in that job. It was his curiosity that made him smart. I used to think that smart was about how much knowledge I had. Now, I define smart as my craving to learn. Creative adaptive mechanisms, resilience, Creativity, curiosity, this is the new smart. Thank you.